Hi, I'm Miriam Evans and I'm one of the pelvic health physiotherapists working in Paris. I've created this video so that you can test yourself um, for rectus, um, for diastasis rectus abdominal muscle separation, otherwise known as DRAM. Now, um, you've got several layers of muscles in your stomach, so um, covering, your, covering your stomach, your abdomen area. So you've got your deep transverse abdominals, which do go from the ribs down to the pubic bone, but they're a lot, um, the connective tissue is a lot thicker further down. Um, and they're a lot deeper further down and they act as a st stabilizer for your pelvis so they help to keep your pelvis in a neutral position um, then you've got your oblique muscles which are um, crisscross muscles and they're used for rotating your body rotating your legs um, um, rota rotating that trunk and they're really really important they're like um, quite fairly superficial particularly further up and then you've got your long rectus muscles coming down the front um, that are also superficial muscles and they are held together by a line of connective tissue called the linear alba. Now during pregnancy, the connective tissue relaxes with the hormone relaxin and it um, allows those muscles to separate so that the baby can grow um, comfortably. And for some reason with some women, it um, gives more than, than the elastic amount so that it doesn't just spring back after you've had the baby. Um, and some, for some women, it actually tears. And um, whether that's because there's hypermobility in genetics, or whether um, the, the you, a genetic loose of the skin, or whether there's a very big baby, um, certainly um, the with babies over eight pounds or with twins, there's a much higher incidence, or mul um, yeah, much higher incident of those muscles coming apart and not coming back together so well after having a baby. At 36 weeks of pregnancy, 100% of all women will have um, a gap greater than two fingers. However, postnatally, we're expecting that gap to come back either to two fingers wide or less. Um, so you're measuring it with your two fingers across, not not down, but they're um, yeah across that way. Um, so the gap can be um, all the way down the linear river from the top to the pubic bone so that's a long that would be a long split it could just be that you have a gap above the belly button it's quite common just around the belly button and it's common and less common but below the belly button if you've had a cesarean section it's more likely to be below the belly button because they go across the skin they go down through the linear alba and then they don't sew that um, connective tissue back up afterwards there will be a gap there and anytime there's a gap in the connective tissue the muscles function is sometimes impaired um, and if the function of these stabilizers are impaired the superficial obliques tend to take over and so we get an overactivity in these muscles here um, where they're sucking in under the ribs rather than the stabilizing of the pelvis and um, now these st studies show that um, six months postnatally about a third of all postnatal women were found to have a diastasis greater than two fingers which means that a third of all women are going are walking around without having corrected it. Um, most of those um, had not had physio or didn't know that there was anything they could do to help themselves um, and just put it down to mummy belly. And actually there's a lot that can be done. And the research shows that if it's not corrected, it can lead to low back pain and pelvic floor dysfunction and even prolapse. So it is really important that we get it fixed. The, the things, other things that happen is that as we compensate, because these muscles down here get switched off, these muscles compensate, this posture changes, um, which again can lead to back problems, um, self-esteem um, as well. So um, it's really important to check yourself over, ask your midwife to check you. Um, if you can't get your midwife to come and see you, then you can check yourself. So I'm just gonna show you um, by lying on a mat, have your knees bent so that you're taking the pressure off your tummy. And then you're going to check below the belly button. So about three centimeters below the belly button with that lower gap. So you put your fingers across your tummy, um, not up and down so they're across. And you're going with two fingers, relax, pushing them down to a relaxed tummy. And then you're just gonna bring your head up. So you're bringing your chin to your chest. You're going as far as you can before your shoulders come off. So we're just coming up about this far. As soon as you start bringing your shoulders off, we tend to compensate and push the stomach muscles out and we're, not, we're no longer getting a true reading. So you're just bringing your head off the, off the mat. Just be aware that if you put your hands behind your head, then you're actually helping the muscles so you're not getting a true reading of the muscles either. 
So just have a monitor what you are there, come up to the belly button, push those fingers down in the tummy, bring your head up again and just measure. If you've got a lot of space between one wall of the stomach and the other, try putting three fingers in or even four fingers in and so you're measuring that gap and it's really um, what you're measuring yourself against yourself. So you can compare in a, in a few weeks time what you are at different levels and then you come up to the next about three centimeters above the belly button, push the fingers down, lift your head up and just measure that gap. So everyone is different. Everyone might have a, like depending on how wide the gap is, how fit you were before, how, um, how, how, how quickly you recover, it'll depend on uh, the exercises that you do. But what we really want to do is uh, get all of those muscles working. So we've got to get the rotation muscles, the flexor muscles and the stabilizer muscles all working together um, to, to, to correct it. Um, we, don't, we want to avoid activities that cause that muscle to bulge. So when you're getting in and out of bed, try lying on your side and then rolling over onto your back if you need to, rather than getting up straight up because that will cause a bulging of those stomach muscles. Um, if you're doing a lot of lifting that's causing those, that to bulge and try and avoid that lifting, um, try and think about engaging your lower transverse abdominals before you lift and engaging those lower ab abdominals before you get out of the chair and before you start to, to move so that you're actively pulling them together as you then lift. So I'm just going to show you three simple exercises you can start doing straight away from day one. And then in terms of progression, I'll try and post some videos of some progressive exercises that you can do for diastasis. Um, but it, you, you can't really do those videos until you are, have got control of these three basic exercises. Um, and you can progress. I've got a core exercises video that you can watch and progress to those. Um, so starting with your transverse abdominal muscle, you can feel this by doing a nice long breath out. So you find your hip bones come in just a, an inch inside and you'll feel in that dip there is where your transverse abdominal muscle um, you can feel that by breathing out so you're going to breathe in and then as you breathe out all the way to the end mostly at the end of that breath you'll feel an activity underneath your fingers that's your transverse abdominal muscle now a nice way to get it is just doing some pelvic tilting so i don't know if you can see my my back but i can fit my hands under my my lumbar spine there and i'm just pushing my back down to feel that compression on my hands holding it for a few seconds before letting go and then again flattening my back squeezing my pelvic floor in as well at the same time if you can squeeze your pelvic floor it's a good way to try and recruit your pelvic your transverse abdominals and then relaxing and you can do this for 10 repeats if you like just do it a few times and it'll just stretch out your back muscles activate those lower abdominal muscles Okay, so then the next exercise is going to be just some head lifts, but we want to make sure that the stomach doesn't bulge. Okay, so you're coming up as far as you can control. So if you want to put your hands behind your head because you get neck pain, that's fine, or you can just come up with your hands here. So just checking that your tummy, getting the control of your transverse abdominals first of all, so you can do your pelvic tilts, tilting your pelvis back, feeling those muscles engage, then lifting your head up, making sure it stays flat. If it peaks and pushes out, you've lost control. So you might need to hold it with your hands if you've got quite a large diastasis. You might have to hold it together as you come up. And they're just going to come up, hold for a few seconds, and then come back down again. Try and blow out as you move. So you might breathe in, and then breathe out as you move up. Breathe in, and then breathe out as you move down. So that's quite a nice one. You can progress that as you find that it gets easier and easier and it's not bulging. You can come up further, but you must can, can gain control of that bulging. Okay, and then some nice rotation. Um, rotation one is just letting the knees drop to one side and then using, feeling your tummy muscles working, you're bringing them back to the middle, let them go to the other side and then using your tummy muscles, you should feel that again in that transversus area, but you'll feel it's more of a rotation exercise. You're feeling it right the way up. And again, keeping that pelvis tilted back to recruit transverse abdominals as you then get your obliques as well as you're going side to side. So you can do 10 of each exercise. And if you can do these a couple of times a day, it's a great way to activate those, those, those muscles. And then you can progress on to um, further core exercises. Um, 
don't let fear stop you from things. I think fear gets in the way of a lot of rehab because you're worried that it's going to bulge. You're worried that something's going to go wrong. So you don't do the exercise. Um, and more research showed that women who were interviewed with erectile exercise at two years were still only doing gentle walking because they were worried about affecting it. Now, um, just doing some exercise regularly, cardiovascular exercise, is going to strengthen them. We want to get those muscles working. We want to get them functional. Um, so if you're worried, get a referral. Try these core exercises to start with um, and just building it up slowly. And don't expect a really, really quick return. Um, so... Uh, the, the body postnatal can take like a year or beyond a year to recover fully. So it's, there's no point in thinking it's going to take weeks. You should start seeing some results in the first few weeks and starting to see a, a gradual flattening of that tummy as you gain control. Um, but it could take up to a year. So please don't lose heart. Um, there's plenty of support on websites as well. Um, one of the things we're really aware of is that because of the loose skin that comes for a lot of people, um, uh, even when the stomach starts to reduce and the muscles underneath start performing better, that loose skin can sometimes remain. Um, and obviously, for um, it can have that can have psychological effects. So making sure that you talk to people, um, that you're getting the support that you need, um, but just progressing your exercises. Get a referral for physiotherapy, um, and we'll give you any support and help that we can. Thank <laughs> you.